See, we'd accept each other. Like, I'd accept the fact when we go and have lunch at a business meeting that you're going to stare at your phone. I'm going to say, Hillary, come on. Hey, hey, come on. You're going to go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Garrison. Oh, no. That's what's going to happen. Okay? We have to be realistic. I need you. And I need you. The real reason people don't want to change is because nobody wants to be a senior beginner. They would wake up in the morning and realize what they used to is no longer valid. So they shoot holes in the new way and they cling to the old way because it makes them smart. The problem that we have is we get face to face with customers and employees and people around us that believe things so strongly, they're looking for reasons to prove what they already believe is true and they're not open. So what is your name, sir, right there? David, he, that guy called you Mark, is that, that was weird. <laughs> My name is David, Mark, he's Mark. <laughs> so when you take a look at all the research, we saw some stuff from Accenture and some stuff from the Harvard Review and the stuff we, we partnered with Gallup and we looked at all this stuff. Think about the people in your life that you know listen to what you say on a consistent basis, how much influence they have over you. The worst leadership strategy is wishing people were like you. You can't do it. I mean, you're just not like me. And I can't manage you like I can manage you. I can shame Frank. I can say, Frank, you screwed up, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I can't shame you, right? If I say, hey, you know, you screwed up, you're like, well, but I'm still awesome. But I'm still, I'm still awesome. I'm still awesome. <laughs> so each generation has to face that situation to where it's going to be different. These young people are entitled. Well, who did that? I did that. My generation, so if, if you are entitled, I don't know that, but the item was my fault. Because I, you're 28, I could be your daddy. I might be your daddy. I might be your daddy. Where, there's no way in the world. We gotta move past this, I'm sorry. There's no way in the world there's no way in the world that I can possibly judge you because I didn't live your life. Have you noticed that we let real characters get away with stuff we don't let other people get away with? What up last night? Oh, just Jimmy just got drunk and stole some laptops. You know Jimmy, you'll bring them back. <laughs> you know Jimmy, like what? What happens if you're phony and screw up? Not so well forgiven. And if you make people feel valuable, they're much more likely to value you and what you have to offer. Reminds me of this story. There's a guy driving down the freeway. He's in Los Angeles, and the traffic is horrible in L.A. Traffic is just terrible. Cars are coming at him. His wife calls on the cell phone. Honey, be careful. I'm watching the news. They say there's a crazy man going the wrong way down the freeway. He goes, no, no, honey, there's thousands of them. <laughs> Sometimes it's you, that's all. So most of the research we saw showed that if you take a look at the role that you play in other people's behavior and are willing to identify that, you've got great influence and great power. Because there's an old saying, you can't change people. Oh, you absolutely can, yes. But you can only change them by taking a look at how your behavior triggers their behavior. If you're willing to take a look at that, you have gigantic influence. Action and adaptability create opportunity. Are we going to innovate? Are we going to inspire? Are we going to collaborate? Do all those things. Heroes and cowards feel the same fear. It's the action they take that separates them. And you can't think yourself into action. You have to act yourself into thinking. You can think about it all day long. Knowledge and power, knowing it and doing it have nothing in common. Can you take the actions you know are right and see you think about things then? Remote employees is the thing. Oh yeah, why is it the thing? Because more and more people don't want to come to work. No offense, but your people don't want to come to work. They want to be home in their underwear watching Netflix. Okay, that's the problem. You see, if you think that, you don't have trust. I said that on purpose. If you believe that they're at home watching some weird Ben Affleck movie and they're not working, that means that you don't trust them, that you don't have any faith, and they know that. So if they know that you don't trust them, 
you can't be influential. You can't engage, you can't increase their performance. So the first thing, the first thing when it comes to managing remote people, managing those, those homebound workers, is they need to know that you believe they're actually doing something. And it's a very basic thing, but remember sometimes we forget the basics and no wonder why the specifics don't work. So the bottom line is making people feel valuable and focusing much more on strengths and weaknesses allows everything else you do to get better results. So anybody who has this idea that you're going to sit someone down and start pointing out their problems and pain points and think that you're going to have some type of, you know, influential advantage, we could find no evidence uh, of that. It just wasn't working well enough. So what are you doing for people they can do for themselves? What's the answer? Is clarity. I wish I could tell you that somehow that intelligence was going to do something. I wish I could, is that really the audience right there? Is that really supposed to be one, <laughs> one dude? Okay. I'm going to try to just keep going like that's okay. Um, we found, we <laughs> Many of you are out there watching this on a tablet or a, a laptop or a phone or your friend's phone that you've stolen. But the, the key here is are we focused on understanding that circumstances do not create our destiny. We've got what it takes to move forward and thrive in any situation, coronavirus or not. We have what it takes to be effective. So let's get started right away. Great lineup. We're going to hear from lots of great speakers. We'll have a great panel. It's going to be a great show. I'm your host, Garrison Wynn, and let's get started. You know, every generation has a war or a pandemic or some weird thing that makes life terrible uh, or seemingly unbearable or unfair, you know. And it just happens to every generation. If you live long enough, it's going to happen. And it just so happens that uh, we're in that now. And there's this weird idea that somehow circumstances create our destiny. And it's just never been true. Historically, it's never been true. So uh, there are people who have been through worse things than you think you're going through, and they came out fine. There are people with worse opportunities than you have. They did pretty well. And that's the truth. So this kind of idea is basically it's, it's a believing the lie. We let our brains tell us something that's just completely untrue. Most of us have the ability to do many great things we're just not that aware of. And the thing about it is, is like, how do you know what you're capable of? How in the hell would you know what you're actually capable of? You wouldn't. So why not just try? Why not put the maximum amount of effort? Why not just, just never stop getting better? Why would you stop getting better? All the research I've seen, I've seen a bunch. And everything I've looked at, and I've literally worked with the entire Fortune 500 for 25 years. And I've seen what those companies do that make them so effective. I look at all of that, it comes down to one thing. It comes down to, can I be flexible when things are kind of terrible? It's, it's true. How good are you? Well, how good are you when it's bad? And the truth is, is most people are better than they think. That's right. Most people are much better than they think. And I think that's something that we can, can try to just embrace and say, hey, you know, we're gonna deal with what comes our, when life gives you a crap sandwich, you learn how to eat crap sandwiches and you move forward. And that's what the most successful people do. Um, robot marketing problems. Another thing happened years ago, a Honda made a robot called Asimo or something. I don't know. First of all, never name a robot, robot that starts off with the word ass. But secondly, Asimo was a robot and the, the market was to replace your butler. Well, how many people have a butler? That's a pretty <laughs> narrow market of people who have butlers. They wanted to replace your butler or give you a robot butler. The problem was, is the robot was weird and clumsy and walk funny. And when people saw the advertisement, they laughed. They thought it was a blooper reel. And literally, Asmo dropped stuff and tripped over stuff. It was an absolute joke. So if you're putting something out there, number one, make sure that your niche market is big enough. Uh, niche markets are great. It's got to be bigger. But also, if, you have a if you're in a niche market, you better be good. You can't be in a niche market and suck. Hey, I've got a niche market and I'm terrible because you'll kill your entire niche market very quickly if you're not very good. And that's what happened to that. And that's why nobody has a robot walking around making them drinks. So thank you so much for having me as your keynote speaker at the virtual event. 
You know, the first thing out of my mouth is when the pain of what you're going through becomes greater than the fear of change, you change. And sometimes not one minute before that. The most talented people are the worst at change and they'll leave in times of change. That's exactly right. You know what? If you're kind of flexible and you kind of suck anyway, it's easy to change. I wasn't that damn good to begin with. Of course I can change. But people who are in the groove, who have a track record of doing it really, really well, are sometimes the hardest to motivate and are most likely to jump ship and go somewhere else to another company that maybe isn't changing as progressively as you are. And that's what the headhunters say when they call them on the phone. That's exactly right. Anyway, that's what we'll talk about. Let's get on with it.